pet here. You are the senior technical director for Joyant, correct? Yes, that's right. What exactly does that mean? Um, I'm a field-facing sales um, technical lead. So I cover all of the Americas. I'm, you know, when you get into a small company, you get fancy titles, but essentially the technical guy <laughs> for all of the Americas. So does that mean you go out and you say, what's your problem? What's your problem? How can we help you? I yeah. think we can help you and go through those things. So. Okay. okay. And what, you know, how, how is the conference so far for you? So you like, have you been here all well, I've never the been here before. Okay. This is your first Dell event? This is my first right. Dell event, yes. Is this your first storage event? No, no. EMC World. So oh, you did EMC World. That's okay, right. that's right. Because you, you, you have some EMC legacy too, right? I do. So, right, so, for, okay. yeah, so okay. for about a year I worked at EMC prior to coming to Joint. And then before that I was an EMC partner. So I lived very, very lively in the storage room. Okay. All right. Um, but so it's so far so good. Um, mm -hmm. I'm pretty impressed with a lot of the innovation that Dell's doing. Um, they're releasing a lot of cool products yeah. and kind of keeping up with the market. And, and, you know, they're doing a lot with social media. That's been pretty impressive is, is yeah. a lot of the people that have been working to do a lot with social media. So um, I always like to see community involvement and getting people engaged. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, they're pretty good. The, with this, uh, they, the, uh, we were hearing a lot about the hands-on lab and the ability to uh, come right. in and touch things, break things. Well, <laughs> yeah, I don't break know things. about break things, but, but they uh, they try. Want that, but, yeah. You know, so it, it seems like that, that's becoming the growing trend with vendors, yeah. right? At the end of the day, customers want to get their hands on the gear and, and play with it. And when you're known for ease of use, like Dell has been known with their Ecologic acquisition, um, that you, you need your customers to be able to touch and feel and smell the gear and play around with it. So That makes sense. Have you gotten some of your hands on? I, 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 <laughs> I have not yet. Um, <laughs> but I hope to get my hands on some of the gear um, later on and, okay. and, and play around with okay. it. <laughs> that's great. That's right. So, so you, um, we've been talking a lot about you know cl cloud stuff uh, today and uh, private cloud versus public cloud. You kind of with Joint you know, work with the private cloud. Mm -hmm. Private and public. So Joint started out about six years ago as a public okay. cloud company. Um, but what happened was about um, a year and a half to two years ago, um, Dell and Intel came to us and said, "You have a pretty compelling platform that's different from VMware and a lot of the other offerings." So. Um, they said, why don't you productize that and actually go out and sell that to service providers and enable them to offer Amazon-like services at a competitive price. Yeah. Um, so we worked a, a year and a half, and we our product GA'd in April. Um, we so April of this year? April of this year um, was our 6.0 release. We actually were selling um, an older release with Dell that we had productized about six months before that. Okay. Um, so Dell DCS solutions. It's, yeah, um, data center solutions. Yeah, their mm -hmm. data center solutions, or their Dell cloud solutions, I think. Oh, is that I think oh. it's I think it's Dell. I don't know. I I, I kind of get Go. mixed up because some people use different terms. Hey, it's a C. I'm like Google it. We'll, it's a we'll, C. we'll look right. We'll find um, out. <laughs> So Sorry. it's specific for web applications, and they actually take our solution into enterprises and enable them to do um, things on our platform that they really can't do on other platforms like VMware. Okay. So um, that's going well. It's been going Good. well. Being a, a Dell partner has been pretty exciting for us, and then being able to actually have a channel to go out into the field has been it's been good for us. Okay. Were, were there any, you know... Um, were there any nervous feelings about becoming a Dell partner? And you know, I, I don't think so. I think um, you know, the nervousness was around you know how do you work with an OEM, and then yeah. how do you actually? We were a services company before, so switching gears and becoming a software company and selling to enterprises um, is 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 difficult for somebody who's been such an engineering heavy organization. So Dell really helped us on the you know how do I go to market? How do I start executing? Um, how do I support it and stand it up? So Dell does integrations and, and um, support as well for us. Yeah. So for the solutions that they sell, we also do sell direct service providers, but um, Dell has been probably one of our biggest partners that we, do, we use. It sounds like it's going fantastic. It is, it is, it's going really well. So this whole migration public to private uh, or hybrid clouds, where do you think, where do you think we're gonna end up? So um, it, it's kind of interesting because I, uh, you know, it, I'd like to describe a lot of the characteristics about what enterprises and companies in general like about cloud and where they put it really doesn't matter to me as much. Um, and the reason why I say that is because um, when you walk into an enterprise or, or a company in general, um, or even dot coms like LinkedIn, Guild Group, those kind of companies who, who are our customers, um, you have you find these these companies that have traditional legacy enterprise workloads. And then you also have these newer 
um, organizations within that are doing innovation. They want to stand things up quickly. They want burstability. They want scalability. Yes, yeah, there's course, that term. Uh, we were talking a little bit yesterday. This, burstability. Right. You, right. Do you know that term, burstability? Uh, yeah. It's not uh, about yeah. bubbles. It's no. Oh, no. <laughs> really? It's not no. about bursting, bursting bubbles. bubbles. No, no, <laughs> I know it a little bit, but uh, go ahead and delve into it. Yeah. So, so they're looking for. Uh, we can use elasticity as another term, right? Yeah. The elastic cloud. Yeah. No, I elastic think that's cloud. taken. That but, is taken. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, but so people are looking for different characteristics. Where in the enterprise, traditionally, they're looking for infrastructure itself to provide the resiliency, the scalability. And then as people go on to newer types of languages like, you know, Ruby and, you know, Python, and they're using a lot of different technologies to develop quicker mm -hmm. in the enterprise, they're looking for a different platform that allow them to do that. And so with us, we have, again, versatility. So, you know, you, you, you start up your website. Here's a good example. Yeah. You start up your website, you have no idea what kind of traffic you're going to have. Um, and if you're using traditional things like, like VMware, where everything's just put in a little boxed up container, if you hit a spike in load, you have to call your service provider back or shut your machine down, add more CPUs to it and stuff like that. What's been so attractive to um, you know, companies like LinkedIn is that it, they, they might not know what that traffic's gonna look like at any given time. And so we actually, our software allows them to burst and use all of the CPUs in a box. They can use all the I.O. capability. And then we still provide multi-tenancy so that they're not stomping all over their neighbors. We make sure everybody has their fair share. Yeah. But you do have that ability to burst without re-architecting your application. I was curious with LinkedIn after they did the very successful IPO, um, did, did they get bursty that day? They did get bursty, and we were really happy about it, too. So, yeah, um, the interesting thing about LinkedIn is that their core IP, and this can kind of go back to the private versus public aspect of it, is um, the engine that drives the, you know, the database talking about the relationships and who knows who, yep. that's actually all in their data centers, and they kind of hold on to that. But everything on the outside of who's tweeting, who knows who, um, you know, whose status updates, all those kinds of things. Um, they basically had this, this uh, I think they call it the, a light engineering team. And what okay. they do is that they come up with all these additional features that they're going to use. They have no idea if they're going to be successful or not. Okay. So they deploy those things on our platform that tie back into their database that they're hosting on their so, own. So they mm. have a core database which isn't based on yours. It's not based on ours. And then they have all these... Oops, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry for your ears. I, my, yeah, sorry for your ears. Yeah. But, but they have all these core... These uh, emerging applications that sit on the outside. That's a perfect way okay. to put it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. And then another example is the Guild Group. So the Guild Group is... is guild? Guild. Yeah. Oh, Guild. Guild or Guild? This Guild. Okay. Yeah, so Guilt is G-I-L-T. What, G -I -L -T. Did, what yeah. did you do? Yeah. I don't know. I made somebody feel bad about something at some point in time. Um, so they have this kind of flash mob sale thing where they'll send an email blast out to all of their the, the people who are signed up, yep. and there will be a sale on a specific set of items, okay. and it only lasts for a couple of hours. So their traffic is very bursty. Um, and, yeah. And so they're over a billion dollars in revenue, and everything is hosted at Join. Wow. Yeah, wow. and it, and their traffic must go. Like it just goes up, straight up and straight, straight down. down. Oh, interesting. Yep. So they can scale down as easily as they scale up. They can, and, and, from, so, and so their cost is that fluid too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it is right. So it's fluid back to it. Does <laughs> yes, say fluid. it does. <laughs> it's very fitting. Um, so that's the exciting thing is that you see more and more enterprises starting to do. It's not just e-commerce and, right. and social media stuff, but you have um, uh, an example of somebody using the cloud is Eli Lilly's using Amazon Web Services. Now we allow service providers to compete with Amazon Web Services, but it's an example of an enterprise using cloud and and, and bursting and elasticity and you know utility billing to actually do some cool things. So what they do is that they're actually doing pharmaceutical research inside of Amazon's cloud. And you would start to say, okay, yeah. there's security concerns, intellectual property, right. but they've done things internally to protect themselves, like they encrypt their data. Um, but what they find is, instead of using a supercomputer to do work, to do pharmaceutical analysis, yeah, right. they'll just basically spin up a thousand machines for eight hours, let all those thousand machines do work, and bring it down. So... Um, mm. They, so no, no, no upfront investment. Huge. No upfront investment. Yeah, yeah. So it and and you find more and more people are trying to do, you know, big data has been the you know a, a lot of vendors are throwing around big data and yeah. analytics and Hadoop mm -hmm. and those kinds of right. things, and that's kind of where we see a lot of the uh, the enterprises um, going to use Joy for is these things that. Like, what is your take on on Hadoop? Because I mean, be, 
So are you a Hadoop competitor? Are you a Hadoop so partner? We, we actually can run Hadoop workloads on our infrastructure. Okay. And okay. Um, again, it's, it's appealing because um, we actually can, can be very cost competitive with Amazon, but we actually allow customers to, you know, you don't want your only Hadoop option to be buying a lot of gear or going to Amazon, right? So in our case, when you can put mixed workloads on something like Joyent that, that actually works with Hadoop workloads very well, it's it becomes something that's very interesting. And explain why you don't want to go, uh, you, you say there's yeah, workloads you don't, you don't want to go to EC2, to explain. I, well, I think a lot of it is um, a couple of things, and I have a lot of respect for, for, for the Amazon engineers. I'm um, sure you do. So, <laughs> but, there's always a but, right? So, in Amazon's case, I think um, it, it becomes a black box to people. They don't necessarily know the magic that's running the machine, and Amazon doesn't let that stuff out. So it's based on, their, their cloud's based on Zen, but right. they have a lot of automation and um, replication type technology that they really kind of hold that intellectual property and they say just trust us with this and, and we'll run it. And some people are uncomfortable just trusting and I think something that kind of piled on unfortunately for all of us um, that really focus on the service provider space is that they had that outage. You know, So the yeah. Amazon Web Services went down. Um, part of it was people said you know, your application should have been built to be resilient. You should have had it in different availability zones. Right. Um, and the reality is, like, there were some bugs that happened that um, kind of didn't allow them to satisfy an SLA. So, hmm. you know, you assume that you go, f you have your application split between two availability zones and everything right. should be fine. Well, actually, multiple availability zones went down. Um, and bad data was uh, was reliably replicated to different sites, right? That's right, and they couldn't replicate <laughs> yeah. everything, and so it was just right. this cascading failure. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, is so um, so people might not trust their information there, and they want to know a lot more about the architecture. Amazon's still sitting in this weird space of infrastructure as a service, but you assume there's some intelligence like platform as a service in there, right? You can just say, okay, give me a disk and make it available to me and make it redundant. And then you just kind of say, well, I don't know what's going to go on behind the scenes, but I trust that if something happens and it goes down, that I'll be able to stay up. Um, and I think people are kind of, you know, they're, they're skittish about those things. And I think that's why VMware has done so well in the off-prem and on-prem private cloud because people know it they it's it's still in enterprise infrastructure that they've been deploying for years right. and they just feel comfortable with they, it they, they, yeah. but it just doesn't satisfy the database workload. administrators not, might not be as comfortable because they want to know which spindle they're on but right yeah <laughs> right so yeah. you know you yeah. just kind of find this interesting space of um, people moving and saying I want that elasticity but I, and, and VMware's might not give me all of that that I want help me find a platform that's going to work out. And in our case, um, we have outstanding I.O. performance because we use local disk and we use all the available memory in a box for caching. Um, we also have something called um, D-Trace and we've productized that into cloud analytics. So so D-Trace is a... It's a Solaris. It's a Solaris, Solaris uh, technology. now Oracle okay. technology, right? Now, now an Oracle technology. Right. Um, it's actually you know open source, so before Sun... Right. So you're using the open source... We are. Uh, uh, of all that. Yeah, so to give you kind of a little, uh, uh, you know, a backstory there, um, years ago, um, when Jason Hoffman and David Young started the company, they didn't take money from anybody. So it was very much, you know, stay as lean as you can, uh -huh. drive the cost down, and so, they picked, they, I think they used FreeBSD many, many years ago. Right. And then probably about five years ago, six years ago, they switched gears and they said, okay, let's start using Solaris because of these neat things called containers that we can right. use. Um, okay. And is containers is, is, is just a, is, is just another hypervisor, right? Actually, or, or not? It could be. Well, it's not. It's not. It's really OS virtualization. It's okay. not necessarily a hypervisor because we don't emulate physical hardware. Okay. So we take a lot of that workload away from you know that overhead and that workload away associated with that. The other thing is that when you're using a Type One hypervisor, which is what effectively VMware um, is you can't see what's going on inside that machine. So if if an example is... Which let's, is why you need all those tools, like Veeam or and stuff like that. To, exactly. To see so what's you actually going on and you have the to physical see, layer. Exactly. Um, so in our case... Profiler. From, profiler yeah, and a pro, bunch of those. Yeah, things. those guys, yeah. Yeah, but we are actually able to see all throughout the stack from the hardware all the way through to the application stack in terms of latency. And so what we find is a lot of customers... And that's D-Trace. That's D-Trace. Right. So customers who are conscious about performance or it's almost one of those things where I describe it as, we call it kind of like an MRI. But the neat thing about the MRI is like, <sighs> if, you're, if you're a football player and you're running down the field, 
you get hit and then you go in for an MRI, MRI right, later, right. right? Well, this is almost like I can constantly have that MRI. So when you while make that, he, while, when you make the impact, yeah. when you make you, the impact, so I can see as he's making that impact what's happening to his head. In this case, they're actually building that into football helmets, by the way. I know. Are they really? <laughs> yeah. Diagnostics and sensors. They and are. Other they stuff. are. Oh wow. But that was only an analogy. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So we can do the same thing. So it, you know, in this case, you're you're wildly viral Facebook game that you just created yeah. starts to have performance problems, you're able to actually use D-Trace and see latency and what database tables are slow and is the system spending time, you know, doing other calls that it doesn't need to be and how can I optimize? Or is well, it huge. just waiting for the network? Or is it just waiting for the network? Yeah. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sorry, I mean, that, but that's huge, thing. you know, that's I mean, right. you need that real-time diagnostics you and, do. and information. So that's the, you know, when you're using something like VMware, you actually, it's a lot harder to get that because you started to layer something on top of that okay. where you have to either hook into the hypervisor mm -hmm. but with us we kind of give that to the customers all bundled in the users can see it the operators for the service providers can see it so now you start to reduce the risk that okay. it, 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 you, you have when you start to go deploy in the cloud so you have your own I'm sorry no, go no you so you have your own hosting environments we do right and you're sort of a supplier to people who want to build their own we are and um, and those people who want to create a public cloud. A public cloud, or they can create, you know, instances, private instances a, a private. for for their customers. Right. So if if you know, um, I don't know, you name like GM says, oh, I want a joint cloud, but I want to have all these physical resources to myself. I don't actually want to expose anything to the internet because this is for something like analyzing GM sensor data on cars when they yeah. hit, have car crashes or something like that. Yeah, so EMC, EMC sold Mosey to VMware because they didn't want to compete with their customers. So how? That's a very good point. What, what, so what's that mean for you? Um, a couple of things. First is that um, we split the business off internally. So serv our, our service provider business is actually internally completely separate from so the software a separate guys. container? It's in a separate container. Well done. Um, <laughs> that was nice. That was nice. Really good. It was. Um, I don't know what I'm going to be able to we, come we, up with next. We, we need to give points for that kind of. We do. No, you don't. You should I just, take away I forgot points my, for that. I'm no, sorry. I need a marker or something to <laughs> right. jot down points, yeah. right? I don't want to play buzzword bingo. That's right. Yeah. Well, after we get done talking about synergies, hopefully we'll okay. get there, right? Yep. <laughs> so, um, so we spun those things off internally. Yep. Um, so we didn't have necessarily something relying on the other thing. We could actually focus on software development by, while at the same time saying, this is our number one customer. Um, and then um, things have kind of evolved. So there's a lot of companies that are interested in also maybe acquiring our, our, our service provider group as well. And we're um, completely fine with that. Yeah, so okay with that. We're at, yeah, it, it's a source of revenue, but yep. if somebody wants to go ahead and pay for it and, and use that as their cloud, they're more than welcome to. Okay. Um, so, and, and the other thing that we do too is that it's very focused on the gaming and social media markets. So your your own cloud. Our own cloud. So that's why I mentioned Guilt Group and LinkedIn. Yeah. Um, Kabam, one of the biggest Facebook developers, the second, I think, behind Zynga, um, uses our platform for all their, their Facebook games. So it, we, we try to stay verticalized. We don't necessarily go and market our public cloud because we don't want to compete with the channel. Right. I, I lived there and I knew what it was like to, oh, yeah. well, being at EMC, it was always, right. you know, are you going to take this direct or are you going to let the channel? And the answer up? was it depends, right? Yeah. <laughs> if you close the deal, we won't. You yeah, exactly. <laughs> I want deal control, right? Right. right. Um, so we lived, a lot of us had come from, um, uh, some of us came from telco backgrounds. Myself, I came from virtualization and, and storage and those things. But um, so there, we're, we're kind of used to working and partnering well with people. We make it understood up front that we're not trying to compete with people. If anything, it, it's, it's kind of a nice thing because we already have seed customers. So if you are... Let's just say you're a company like Home Depot, and you say, yep. I use Joyent Public Cloud for these workloads, but I'm not going to put everything there because I want you know, multiple providers and stuff like that. Well, now we can go out to those service providers that are saying, hey, we're interested in spinning up a Joyent Cloud, and I can say, well, great, because here's a customer. Wow, right. okay, that's interesting. Yep. Yeah. So, um, you know, it, it's, been, it's been an interesting ride. I mean, just working for me, it was working for, for a larger company. Yep. Um, yeah. and, and I think the thing that sold me on Joyent was that their technology was truly different. And so one of our biggest investors alongside 
um, um, Dell's a, a smaller investor, but Intel Capital right. came came through and, and said this. Those were the people. As, as, you know, you it. sort of do listen if Intel Capital comes and says you should yeah. make a product out of this. You, you, you do a little bit. To, we right? like what you have, yeah. and we're, we're interested in helping you yeah. get that off the ground. Yeah. So Intel's it might been influence phenomenal. something. You do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and you know, some people may say, well, Sol Solaris containers. Well, the the first thing is that. Um, people who are deploying on our cloud don't care about the operating system running there. They say, I've got a Unix-based workload, or right. I've got Windows or Linux, and I want to take advantage of these features, and I really don't care, so go ahead and deploy it. We can deploy, actually, we can deploy Windows and Linux on top of our platform as well. So I know, you know, so that's in the open source community, right? It is. So there's interesting dynamics then. There's anybody else could go and do this then, right? Partner and, with Dell, take the advantage yeah, of they could, they could. containers. And they could, and, and a lot of it, we've, we've done things like put multi-tenancy in the OET, the IO stack, which has never been done. You contributed that into the open source community, or that's I'm not sure it's, if it's been put back yet, but okay. the idea is, since we're, we're modifying that source code, most of the stuff that we do is, is put back. Things around automation, orchestration, all of our stuff has Mace APIs, it, you know. Based it outside of it. And, yeah, so yeah. It, it's outside of that that stream. That's why you could technically pick up, you know, the software and go do it yourself. But there's a lot more automation, okay. API accessibility, and orchestration. And of course, that you there's get. customer acquisition too. You've got you've got, you've got a is. customer set there. That's yeah. right. That's so, right. So. Yeah. So, so we can do that. We also have, um, so, so most customers don't care about the OS. It's, you know, religion about OS is starting to slowly fade away. Okay. It's still there in the enterprise, but you it just- hasn't, That hasn't actually happened at Apple yet, but. No, <laughs> you know, that's, that's going to be pretty interesting. Um, yeah. But. But you never know. Yeah. So, um, um, I shook you off. Yeah, you just did. I'm sorry. I, I was just thinking that. like, Where's the, where we have a Mac and a PC that's on yeah. Us. We do. They <laughs> get along well. Yeah, yeah hers probably better. We, yeah, a little bit. I just have to hitch my pants up to him. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, I keep saying, well, you know, Michael Dell's first computer was a was an Apple was too. An Apple. So. There you go. Did you know that? Is your next computer going to be a Dell? Well, of course. Of course, right? <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, also, when the acquisition happened between um, uh, with with Sun with and Oracle, Oracle, right? So uh, there were some developers that developed ZFS, DTrace, yes. and yes. containers that maybe weren't so happy and were looking for other opportunities. Yes. So they're actually employed by Joy. You hired them. Okay. We, uh, we hired them. You hired them all. Yeah. So we yeah. Uh, contribute back with a couple of companies, and um, we actually have the developers that help us make it happen. Okay. And MySQL, there's some sort of similar things happening around the MySQL too, right? Yeah, so I, I think a lot of people, so a lot of those things that went to Oracle, kind of like, yeah, they get to have it, but a lot of the talent ended up leaving. Yeah. Okay. All right. It's, it's unfortunate, but it, it is. Things happen. So, looking two years out, where do you see yourselves? Um, hopefully, we'll see many, many giant clouds sitting out there <laughs> running. Um, you know, there, there's, as a startup, obviously. You, you've developed disruptive technology and then mm -hmm. other people are interested in you as well. So I don't know, you know, it, we used to say leads. what happens, but um, we're just kind of, we're, we're um, we just, so engineering, we're engineering focused and we just keep moving down the path of making a pretty competitive product. Okay, so you, you talked a little bit about social media, mm -hmm. you right? Did, yeah. And you have your own blog. What's I the do. Tell us, tell us a little bit about the folks you tell us the name of the blog. And actually, sure. Breathingdata.com. Breathing, Breathing data. data. Yeah. So, um, breathing data. It was. I was just sitting there. I'm like, what do I do every day? And I just sit here and I talk to people. Data. I breathe data. I have to sit here and look at. You it's know, a nice phrase. It is. I don't, is it relaxing or is it stressful? Depends. Depends on how much data, right? Or yeah. Need, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when you start talking, if you're talking, breathing data, you need a coach to help you breathe slowly. You do. It's almost Probably. like it can. It could be a Zen-like experience, it could right? Be. <laughs> um, <laughs> so the things that I cover, I I used to cover a lot. I've been really busy. I've only been with Joint for about four months, so it's been a pretty quick ramp up for me. Okay. Um, but I used to cover things around enterprise IT and the struggles that they have around, um, you know, I focused a lot on VBlocks when I was at EMC, and those were disruptive pieces of technology that the IT department didn't really like. So I would, I blog about things like governance yep. and standards and, you know, how IT organizations can really start to meet the needs of the business. It's kind of funny because when we go in, a lot of people are interested in joint technology, and, and it's the business units that want to talk to you because they want to do things like, I am a major telco who, I don't know, I have a really big website, and I have a group that maintains that. 
they don't want to go through the same processes that internal IT has. They want to be able to develop on a platform they like. So I, I, I spend a lot of time blogging about those type of topics because when you would go in and talk to somebody about VBlock, the IT guys would be like, no, that's going to take my job away. Right. I'm the one responsible for designing enterprise yeah. architecture. Yeah. And the point that I always love to, to, to tell people is that you actually don't get paid to design infrastructure. That's just a necessary evil of your job. Mm -hmm. But it, it's the same thing of like building a PC. Would you rather build a PC or would you actually rather work on that PC? I'd rather, I'd rather build, build it. Would you? Uh, <laughs> the Sorry, you we went to the totally wrong crowd. <laughs> well, I'm yeah. not a coder. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, well, but you didn't build your PC. Your laptop. No, I I, I like playing. to work on it and I like to, to build it. But so, you know, I yeah. I have in the past, <laughs> not, not this specific I, one. I of built, course. I, I, but I was the I, same I, way, right? Yeah, so I, I like to build PC. I, 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 I did, and and I kind of what happened to me that made this transition mentally happen. You grew for me. up. I grew up <laughs> at some didn't. point. Yeah, I know. I'll Aww. help you guys. It, it's We're okay. We're here in the land of Disney World, gonna, and you grew up. I'm gonna I'm here to coach you. Okay. This is all about breathing. Breathing. Um, so I remember in, in, I think, 2003, I got an iPod for my birthday, and I was a big Linux guy. So I had a Linux box, and I had to try to get my iPod working with Linux. And it actually took me, like, three days of, like, compiling kernel drivers yeah. and getting the right hardware. And it was fun to do that, but I'm like, I really would just like to use my iPod and listen to some music at this point. So I don't know. That's the kind of, uh, yeah. that's what I equate a lot of it to. Is that's, there's certain things that yeah. you probably do want to build. And of course. And generally speaking, for sure, you know, most people want to be able to just use it. Just use it. Yeah. Right? Or spend time building the things that are important to you. Correct. And not building those things that are supposed to be a commodity. I think, I think, I mean, it, you know, just take that high, high level and that's what life is all about is focusing on the things that are important to you right. rather than, you know, doing everything, getting involved sure. with every little piece of your life. Like so. you don't have to hand crank your car anymore and that's probably pretty nice. Oh, oh you're God. not, you're not supposed to have to do that? No. But oh, I did rent a car where a you car. have to lock each door individually. Oh. Yeah, uh, you did. <laughs> His car was that, that he rented. Car, or was no, it broken? It was an accident of the. It was. It was an accident of a JetBlue bargain thing, and I didn't need a big car, and I wanted decent mileage, so I got this car. You have to lock every door individually, and you have to roll down the windows with the crank. It's really great. Congratulations. Yeah, my kids have been complaining about it the whole trip. It's great. Well. No, it's fun. Yeah. Yeah. So it that's is, what is it really fun? No. No. Yeah. He's just being totally sarcastic. <laughs> So that's what Breathing Data is all about. Yeah, and, and how often are you blogging there? Uh, not very often. Probably like once a month when I'm good. But you're going to do it more often now, Absolutely. Right? I'll, do, yeah. I'll do it more of often. Course. <laughs> <laughs> because obviously you can't have a blog and not be consistent. If you, right. right, exactly. That's one of the yeah, things that, uh, that makes it work is yeah, consistency. It right. is. I have a blog, but I don't blog. That really and doesn't come right. off very well. Yeah, right? yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much, Ed. We really appreciate your time. Thank you. Did